if there is a quest headphone manufacturers didn't complete with flying colors at a reasonable price, then that's the quest for the perfect sounding closed back headphone. From tens of closed backs I tried in around 30 years, I believe only two of them sounded great, but those uh, cost above $3,000 and uh, recommending such pricey headphones with limited usage is not that easy. However, there is one guy that not only released a great sounding closed back headphone, but he also exceeded my expectations, especially when it comes to tonal balance and technicalities. These are called SJY Horizon closed back carbon that you can get at a discounted price of 999 US dollars on Apple's Audio web store. And yes, uh, these were sent by Apple's Audio in exchange for my video review, but as usual, all thoughts and opinions are always my own. After seeing them online, honestly, I wasn't so excited to receive this package uh, because they looked quite bland to me and not as striking as I would have liked to. However, after checking a Q&A with Jeffrey of SJY Audio on Apple's Audio blog, I immediately understood the reasoning behind these uh, rectangular shaped cups with uh, rectangular drivers inside with angled ear caps made out of randomly oriented carbon fiber strands that naturally dampen vibrations coming from within. So yeah, while their design is quite understated with this matte black everything color scheme, they still stand out from anything I've seen and it seems that Jeffrey put a much bigger accent on the Sonics rather than on the looks. And personally, I can accept such a compromise. And except for their aluminum and carbon fiber caps, Everything else was made out of metal and leather, so uh, in truth this should withstand the test of time as only high quality materials have been used all around. They weigh around 680 grams uh, since most of it is made out of metal and let's not forget that this is a pair of planar magnetic headphones that use some of the strongest magnets available right now and those are also on the heavier side. If you ever used a pair of Odyssey headphones from the LCD lineup and had some neck pain issues, then uh, you would probably have them as well on the SJY Horizon. However, the good part is that the weight is evenly distributed on top of my head and around my ears and in two hour listening marathons, these weren't uncomfortable like it was the case uh, with my T plus A Solitaire P. The ear pads are soft and squishy and I also like that you can easily attach and detach them thanks to a magnetic locking mechanism. And before we move on to sound impressions, I want to draw your attention to one important aspect many headphone builders overlook, cable quality. Usually the stock cables don't use some fancy conductors, insulators and geometries, but uh, these things weren't overlooked on the SJY Horizon. The cable is lightweight, it lacks microphonics, as you can see it's very flexible. Uh, we have 3.5 jacks on the headphone end and it's terminated with a balanced 4.4mm plug. While we don't get a 4-pin XLR cable in the package, you can use any of your existing Hyphaman headphone cables or you can use any other third-party cable with 3.5mm jacks on their cups. If you are wondering what technology has been used, these are closed back Palanar Magnetic headphones that use some one-of-a-kind drivers made in-house by Jeffrey of SJY Audio. There were more than 60 revisions until reaching a desirable tuning and yes, I'm actually testing the latest iteration right now. Perhaps what's not so cool about these headphones is a very low impedance of 11 ohms and also a low sensitivity of 90 dB. So these are mostly current driven headphones at 11 ohms uh, impedance uh, as opposed to say voltage driven high impedance dynamic headphones. Most USB dongles won't work with these and the biggest majority of portable DACAMs and digital audio players also won't work that well with these. But more about that in a minute. All right, everyone. Now let's talk about the Sonics. And this is where I spent most of my time. Actually, I'm testing these for more than two months now. I wanted to be sure that 
everything I'm going to say right now will be reflected by your impressions as well. I wanted to know all of their pros, all of their cons. I want to know how they work on a couple of uh, portable dock amps, uh, portable digital audio players. I also try these on more than five desktop headphone amplifiers. And a few things stood out to me and let's talk about those one by one. First of all, I will say that making a perfect pair of open bear headphones that offer you a really nice balance in between bass, mid-range and treble and have a really nice balance in terms of technicalities, offering you lots of resolution, a really fast transit response, uh, open wide sound stage, uh, natural rendition of the music uh, is very hard to do and some of the best open bear headphones that have some of these traits will cost you north of 2000 US dollars. However, making a really nice pair of closed back headphones that have the same traits, the same technicalities, the same natural rendition is close to impossible. I mean, in 30 years of headphone listening, I believe I tried only two great sounding closed backs and those were uh, DCA Stealth at 4000 US dollars and also Kenerton Rockner at a little over 3000 US dollars. Everything else was just okay, possible, or just plain wrong sounding. I remember even refusing to review a pair of closed back headphones because I couldn't understand them. <coughs> Audivina. But right now, let's focus on the SJY Horizon. And I'm not sure how a single person can do it. And I'm not sure how much time Jeffrey invested into this project. But in my eyes, he is already Golden Year certified like I am. Not only do we get a legendary bass delivery quantity and quality wise, given that you already have a great headphone amplifier that can push them to their limits, but also their mid-range was never dry, it was never thin sounding, and the treble while sparkly and full of energy, it was never becoming harsh and listening fatigue didn't settle in even after three hours of music listening. Most closed back headphones uh, start rattling their drivers at higher volumes and that usually happens with uh, dynamic headphones. If you have ever tried some closed backs from Focal or a few from Sennheiser, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. Once you go louder than 95 dB, the sound is getting distorted. Uh, the bass is no longer of high quality and more like really muddy, distorted. And that's the last thing you want in a pair of expensive uh, closed back headphones. Luckily, we don't have anything like that on the SJY Horizon. You can go as loud as you want. You can go deep, but distortion will never appear on this pair of headphones. And I have some measurements to back this up. These don't have such issues. And no matter how loud I went, they will still maintain a refined and tight sound without sacrificing anything and without adding nasty distortion. These can be fun and these can be punchy sounding. Uh, just make sure to send a couple of watts from your amplifier to their drivers and they will start uh, sounding much nicer. Uh, these can be also polite and quite mellow on some uh, entry level and low power devices, but once you start pumping lots of power, uh, these are basically transforming into something else, uh, into some dynamic beats once you pump lots of current into their drivers. Except for their understated look and higher than usual weight, I have a much bigger concern to discuss with you guys. Their low impedance of 11 ohms and also their low sensitivity of 90 dB. While on paper it doesn't seem that scary, right? But once you start playing with them, uh, you start realizing that uh, these are very power hungry headphones. From portable devices, only two of them work great and those were XDO XD05 Pro and also Fio Q7, but those are mostly transportable devices, not quite portable devices. Those are really, really huge. Moving on to something smaller like uh, Shining M3 Plus and Fio M21, I was barely arriving at 85 dB. Uh, so forget about dynamics and forget about reaching uh, some higher peaks like 95 dB, 100 dB. That is really not possible with uh, small USB dongles, with small DACAM combos and with small portable digital audio players. 
you will need something beefy, something powerful, something that will drive this very well. With that being said, nothing does it better like a proper desktop headphone amplifier, and this is what I've used most of the time. I actually use the Kain Soul 170HA and also the Felix Audio NV Performance Edition, uh, together with the Barson Audio Soloist Voyager. So all of these three amplifiers sounded absolutely fantastic on the SJY uh, Horizon. Dynamics, uh, those sounded lively, very resolving, clean, natural, a big sound stage. So exactly what you would expect from a great sounding amplifier and a great sounding pair of closed back headphones. However, if you don't wanna spend a small fortune, then I recommend getting something like a Flux Lab Acoustics Mentor. That one provides 11.2 watts per channel in 32 ohms and a single mentor will easily drive the SJY Horizon and it costs 1300 US dollars. It's currently sold out, but uh, these guys are releasing them in small batches. So they will be a next batch. So just watch out their website. And uh, if you want a really nice amplifier, the mentor is that one. Compared to the rest of my headphones, uh, these are slightly easier to drive compared to Haifman Suzvara, but harder to drive compared to Haifman Suzvara Unveiled. Next are coming T plus A Solid Therapy and then uh, Sennheiser HD 800S. So I'm not kidding, these are very hard to drive. These are the second hardest to drive headphones that I have in my possession. You know what's quite unusual on this pair of closed bay headphones? They're open and wide sound stage that uh, you can mislead them for open bay headphones and I'm not exaggerating. I mean, the only and the only closed back headphones that sound bigger to me, those are Kenerton Rognir that go for 3,000 US dollars, but DCA Stealth that go for 4,000 US dollars that I also like, are nowhere as spacious and 3D and holographic like this. So this part is quite important. And once I put them on the Cayenne Soul or on the Felix Envy, I can mistake them for the Suzvara OG. This is how open this can sound with the right amplifier. So there is plenty of air in between the notes. The stereo separation is always a pleasant surprise, especially on closed backs. And since these are also quite technical and clean, focusing on sounds floating in the air is so much easier to do. So in the end, these are not just great in terms of tonal balance, technicalities and so on, but also in terms of sound stage, something that you'll never expect out of a pair of closed back headphones. Their resolving abilities are also miles ahead compared to what I'm usually getting from a pair of Odyssey LCD2, Odyssey LCD3. Uh, the Sandy Peacock is also not as resolving, not as transparent sounding like this. Uh, so from my own headphone collection, I believe only a few headphones can uh, reach or even surpass their resolving abilities, their transit response, and those are high from my headphones. However, there is one thing that SJY uh, Horizon does much better compared to any high formans, and that's the coherence, the tonal balance, and the frequency response extension without becoming harsh. I'm sorry, but I cannot enjoy high for my headphones on uh, ultra flat, dead neutral equipment. That is uh, not really happening because uh, the treble can become harsh and listening fatigue is settling in. Something that is not happening on these, the trebles are much calmer in a way, the energy is not overbearing. I can listen to treble intensity tracks on these and I can listen even on, on an ultra flat and dead neutral gear with this and that wouldn't be a problem. They seem to resolve plenty of detail. Uh, there is plenty of sparkle and there is plenty of energy in the top octave, but all of this comes forward without adding digital glare. If the power requirements are met, then I can enjoy them on both entry level and high end electronics without forcing me to lower the volume with treble intensive tracks. Last but not least, compared to any other closed back headphones that I have tried, these offer the most balanced frequency response that I have measured. And even without looking at those measurements, it becomes obvious that these are transparent, clean, quite fast sounding, but without going to either the bright or the dark side. 
while the bass seems quite flat with very small deviations at around 50 and 60 Hz, in reality I feel it much stronger. So yes, you can make them quite punchy, uh, you can make them hard slamming in the bass, just make sure to pump some high quality watts into them. Uh, while these are not the punchiest sounding headphones from my stable, uh, these are easily sitting in the top best headphones when it comes to bass kick, bass impact, bass sustain, bass decay. Let's not forget about the bass quality that also sits pretty high. While these aren't warm or sweet sounding in the mid-range and their uh, mid-range delivery won't put lots of goosebumps all over your body, these were lacking any kind of uh, thinness or dryness that I'm usually getting from closed back headphones. The vocals sounded right to me and I didn't need to adjust anything in Rune or add any kind of EQ. I believe that the vocals sounded just right. For example, the female vocals were high-pitched but pleasant without becoming shouty or nasal. And I believe that the Horizon provided the right weight and the right substance with every note. String bass instruments had a natural vibe attached to them and overall this is what I would describe as a neutral mid-range delivery with natural overtones and with rich textures. The trebles might be another highlight on this particular set of closed bay headphones and no matter what music and what gear you are listening to it's never peaking above the mid-range or above the bass and for me personally this is very important because I can enjoy basically anything without lowering the volumes or without skipping those uh, treble intensive tracks. The spark is there, the contour of the notes is also there, the top octaves seem well defined, the energy doesn't seem to roll off too soon and the drivers are still reacting way above 16 kilohertz and the small details never hide in the shadows. The cool part is that the trebles never go overboard and it seems that the SJY Horizon are dampening only the treble energy excess so of course you can use that ultra flat and dead neutral gear like a, a topping stack like an SMSL stack and that will sound just fine. Let's briefly look at the measurements I did with the mini DSP ear system that is not following any international standards so please don't take this very seriously. This is the smoothed out frequency response using original headphone compensation files. As you can see their drivers are matched quite well. There's a slight boost between 50 and 60 Hz that makes them fun and punchy sounding and the treble is never peaking above the bass or mid-range region appearing clear without becoming fatiguing. The waterfall combines the frequency response reading with decay and you can see their excellent tuning choosing a neutral yet fun sound signature. Distortion sits below 1% at any frequency region, even at 85 dB SPL and overall I'm looking at the best measurements I ever recorded for a pair of closed back headphones. And here we have it guys, objectively as measured and subjectively as heard. I don't have much to complain about these, except for the understated look, low impedance and low sensitivity that demands gobs of power to run at their best. They exceeded my expectations and I don't believe they have a real competitor at one kilobuck at this moment right now. Their technical performance is top notch, their sound staging capabilities were also quite impressive. But the most important part is that these were fun to listen to and this is the only reason this video dropped today and not two months ago like it was supposed to. I don't want to put them down once I power on that Kain or the Felix Envy, I just want to groove along and this should be the only reason you might want to invest in what I believe are the best closed back headphones you can get right now at around one kilobuck. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed my review, don't forget to like, dislike, comment, maybe subscribe if you found this video helpful and I'll see you soon with a flagship topping deck review. See you soon, cheers!